David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. When taking a closer look at pens, I like it when a pen surprises me. Today, I have a pen for you which did just that. It's from a brand I've never reviewed before, and while I was familiar with the brand, this was the first of their pens that I've tested. The company is Karn Dash, and the pen is the 849. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Karin Dash 849, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Points Pens, formerly known as Points of Distinction, for providing this pen for review. Uh, Karin Dash is a company based out of Switzerland, established in 1915, so they've been around for over a hundred years. The Karin Dash name is actually derived from the nickname of a famous French satiric political cartoonist, who in turn took his name for the Russian word for pencil. Uh, for the most part, in regard to fountain pens, Karin Dash is a luxury brand. They offer a model or two in the $300 range, but then the vast majority of their models are in the $800 range and significantly higher. But we'll discuss price later, but the pen I have for you today is basically their entry-level pen, and I believe their lowest cost offering, and is in the $50 range. The pen arrives in this no-nonsense box. Uh, inside we have a cartridge, and then we have the pen. This is the Karin Dash 849. Uh, this design has been around for a while. The ballpoint version of this pen was introduced back in 1969. It's available in a wide variety of vibrant colors. Uh, this, of course, is the orange. It's very bright and fluorescent. Uh, the 849 is a bit on the thin side. Uh, it is made from aluminum, and the barrel and cap are both faceted in a hexagonal shape. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. The finial is topped with the Karin Dash logo raised in relief. There's a lot going on around this clip. Uh, first of all, right above the clip, it is printed Swiss made. Then we have this rather unique looking clip. I like it. Uh, I think it has an interesting look to it that matches the aesthetics of the rest of the pen. And then it also wraps around the side. Now, I thought this was a bit odd. Uh, Karin Dash's branding for this pen is underneath the clip, which makes it a bit hidden, something you typically don't see on a pen. But check this out. If you don't care for this clip, then it is actually very easily removed. I'm just putting it down here a little bit, but you could take it all the way off. Uh, and when it's gone, you're left with this very small little metal nub, which really doesn't stand out too much. So if I wanted to remove this clip, then having that little piece there wouldn't bother me or make me feel like something had been removed from the pen. And then this uh, clip could actually just clip and snap right back on. The cap is straight. And then there is an even transition to the barrel, with the corners of the facets being cut down slightly. The barrel is straight and devoid of any markings or brandings. And on the end, we have a very slightly rounded piece of metal, which holds a bit of a surprise, which I'll show you here in a bit. The cap snaps off to reveal this rather pointed steel nib. Uh, it's stamped with the hexagonal Karin Dash logo. Uh, the nib design reminds me a bit of Laumi's, uh, the way the corners are squared off a bit. I'll discuss this more in the writing sample, but uh, as I mentioned up front with this pen surprising me, uh, the main reason it did was this nib. When I first saw it, I wasn't necessarily expecting much in the way of performance, but I found this fine nib on this pen here to be very pleasant and much smoother than I expected, uh, especially for a fine. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The 849 has a very thin section, much thinner than my personal preference. Uh, the section begins with a raised ring and angles up just slightly until you have a steep step up to the barrel. Uh, for me personally, this section is so thin that I find myself gripping the pen further back than I typically would, so my fingers kind of rest both on the section and on the barrel. The pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. 
Now, I mentioned the end of the barrel held a bit of a surprise. Uh, the edge of the cap is a thin metal, and around the edge of the metal end of this barrel is an almost imperceptible channel. Uh, when you look at the end of the barrel, you really don't even notice it's there. But the metal on this cap just slides right in, and it snaps to ensure its security. Uh, it's a pretty clever design, and I don't find that uh, the length here is unwieldy or it backweights the pen or makes it uh, throws off the balance at all. Uh, the 849 is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and converters. A single cartridge is, was provided, but a converter was not. Uh, this one here was an extra that I had, uh, and it fits in here just fine. Uh, and the, uh, the seal around the section is decent. Now, what I have found when using this pen is that the section can easily be unscrewed. Um, I find myself having to tighten it on occasion. Uh, when the pen is capped, if you happen to, if it's a little bit loose and you happen to turn the cap a bit during one of uh, these moments when the section isn't completely tight, then the barrel can unscrew from the section. So um, I would categorize this as just kind of a minor annoyance, one that really doesn't come into play in, uh, unless the section is a little bit loose or not secured tightly. On the Points Pen site, the Caran 849 retails for a little over $50. Uh, and I feel that's on the high end in regard to a value proposition for this pen, but not completely out of line. Uh, Caran d'Ache, for the most part, is a luxury brand, and in regard to fountain pens, I believe this is their least expensive model. For an entry level into this brand, it's a solid pen. Uh, are there some things I would change? Sure. Uh, the section is way too thin for me. It'd be nice if it included a converter as well. Uh, but the nib performs very well, and I think it has a unique and a distinct look that I appreciate. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Points Pens for providing this pen for review. There will be a link in the notes below where you can check out this pen on their site. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Caran 849. Uh, here it is with a Lamy Safari. Here it is with a Pilot Prera and a Pilot Metropolitan. In regard to some other pens, here it is with a Bennu Tessera, a Twisby Vac 700, and a Faber-Castell Loom. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Prera, the Loom, and finally the Vax 700. Here we go with the writing sample for the Karandash. Eight four nine. This is a fine steel nib, and I feel it kind of writes on the medium side of fine. And the ink that I'm using here today is Tasia Sora. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a nice turquoise blue. Uh, here it is in comparison to a Visconti turquoise, which is a little bit darker. Uh, and then here it is with Lamy's Pacific Blue, which is ser somewhat similar to the, uh, the Visconti turquoise. This is what the bottles look like. Uh, they come in 40 milliliter bottles, uh, and they're very, very nice inks. In regard to the rest of the writing sample... Uh, I find this fine nib to be very pleasant. You can get a bit of flex out of here. 
um, that if you push it a little bit, you can get a bit of flex out there, especially, especially for a stainless steel nib. In regard to some ink flow, I find that it's decent. In regard to some reverse writing, it is a little bit on the sharp side. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed has no problem keeping up whatsoever. So, there we have the Caran d'Ache 849. So if you're looking to take a step up for some of the entry level pens, uh, this is something definitely to consider. It performs well, it has a bit of style to it, uh, and it's something interesting to potentially add to your collection. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.